Welcome to Trading Lounge and the gold and silver report for the 26th of January. Starting with gold on the monthly chart here, I just want to point out one thing and that is that um, the move down through here is really confirmed as a corrective move, a bullish corrective move because the move down through here has been on lower volume here. Obviously the last bar here is January and we're still moving through January and that may see an increase in uh, volume as well. So we'll see where um, where that ends up. I mean, when you're reading volume uh, uh, bar by bar here and relating it to here, it's really, in, it's the... It's the volume bar's relationship with the previous volume bar and the volume bar's relationship with the price bar. And with the price bar, you would have the range, the open and close, and the range um, of the bar. So they're the, they're the elements that you would need to read that. But just in the bigger picture here, we can see that the volume is diminishing, uh, meaning that sellers are not in control of the market. All corrections are on lower volume and a trend needs increasing volume to be a trend well that's not quite true you can have a trend that's that's moving up and volume that's diminishing I think we might be able to see that actually on the weekly chart here or have I been yet yeah, we can see it here so a little volume lesson here um, so um, when a trend uh, is going in either direction, up or down, it needs increasing volume to confirm that it's a trend. When you see this mark, when you see this moving up through here, for example, and you see the volume here, bar by bar, decreasing here, that really high volume bar will be on this one here. But this this moving up here on lower volume as each bar becomes lower volume here, that's divergent. So that's telling you that the market's just going up um, because there's uh, really no sellers at that point. The sellers have moved in um, at this point here um, and that's that trend to the downside, that move to the downside here on that bar with increasing volume, that's telling you that obviously there's a turn in the market. That's pretty standard. But the other point here too is that this is moving down through here, these two bars here, but also on lower volume as well. So it's telling us that um, that there's no the sell, there's no more sellers coming in. They may come in, um, and we're kind of expecting a um, an ABC rally here. If you know, so we're expecting another little move up closer to the 1900 area through here. Let's just get rid of that. Um, so that's when the sellers here, the drop, may push it down again at that point. So we'll see that come into play uh, through here. But the Jan January volume uh, here so far is really quite low. Okay, so let's have a look at the the daily chart and also to want to ex just explore another count here as well that's been on our website. I think that I might have it here. Yeah, so this um, <clears throat> this count here is a bit of a um, triangle pattern. So long A wave here, smaller B wave, a C wave, and a D wave and an E wave here. So I think the interesting thing about this is that it doesn't break lower down to these areas, down to the um, down to around the seventeen hundred that we were kind of considering here. It stays up. It stays up a bit more supportive so we'll just keep continuing to track this it may not be the case but it's just something that we can bring into the fold and and follow a little bit um, but either way when we're talking about uh, the sort of the triangle patterns things do get rather complicated I mean in the first instance here we haven't really pulled back up to our 61.8 percent retracement level so I'm just going to go in and talk about that for a little bit So there's different ways to, to count all of this, but <clears throat> as I mentioned before, um, there was a situation where we can have this A wave down to here, B wave to here, and a C wave down, down here further into this space here for this as a WXY. So that could play out um, 
for this, this would probably be about the same length uh, here as, as the A, the, the, this move here and this move here. And the other move, of course, takes us further down still here with this being a wave 4 here and then down for a wave 5 here. So this becomes the wave 3 over here. So we just need to keep an eye on that. So, there's a, there's a, so we've, we've been working these two patterns. But the other pattern that I just showed you then really keeps it under this low coming into into play here. So it really keeps it pretty much above the the 18, really. It may, it may spike down a little bit, but we'll just keep an eye on, on that um, as such. Our focus now really is this move here. So that's what we're here today to do. But just thought I would um, ramble on about that other stuff. Um, <clears throat> so... We can count this down as one and two and three and four and five here. It works okay. Um, so that means that we should have a corrective rally. Now, the tricky bit was that um, we're expecting a move back up to the 50 and the 61.8%. Um, <coughs> it hasn't really reached even the 50% here. Not that it has to, um, but it hasn't. So... It just leaves the door open a little bit and possible that this market can move uh, higher from this point. This move down here can be counted in uh, three waves. So it's OK to have the B wave here. And it's also OK to have the B wave sitting over here as well. So it is possible we don't have any trade setups yet for all of this, really. So we can do some for the intraday, of course. But um, it's still possible to get a move up into this space. That's what I'm trying to say. So we need to kind of understand things a bit better. This move here, yeah, you can label it in, in different ways. That's not a, not a problem. But it, it's not a really... It's not a beautiful five wave structure uh, so that makes it a little bit uh, difficult so I'm just going to go to the um, to the tick chart next but <clears throat> a couple of things here is that the balance point for all this through here is the 1850 so between 1800 and 1900 here we've got the trading levels which would be uh, one two and three here and then five and then eight. So the Fibonacci numbers one, two, three, five, and eight. But with eight, we call in 65 and 72 as group two here. And that sort of helps break down the problem a little bit. So we're at this balance point through here at the 50 here. So we're really sitting here. So um, from this high to this low here, we could look at that as the, the top. There's more like um, 78.6, the square root of 61.8 percent so a move above that would obviously tell us that we're going higher at that point and we would need to look for five waves in this leg here based on this low here and of course um, from this low here to this high here this would be roughly the 50 60 percent level down here as well so that also gives us an opportunity if that broke at that point that would tell us that the market's coming lower at that point OK, so that means that if that if that low here breaks, then it's likely that this B wave top is in play. Otherwise, um, if this moves up through here, then we need to track five waves up into that space there. So we can look at that in a bit more detail on the tick chart. So like I mentioned, the move up through here hasn't reached the 50% or the 61.8% and it doesn't really display a nice five wave structure to the upside. Uh, it could be counted differently uh, in different ways. We could also put the B wave here for this. Um, it's possible that that's a top in play. So we need to sort of understand that, but it doesn't really give us a nice five wave structure down here. It's more like an A wave, a B wave and a C wave here. At the same time, I... 
I, it's hard to count this up as five waves as well. I could count this as one and two here, and then one and two in here, and three and four and five to here for the third wave, fourth wave, and fifth wave. So I can see that being like an A wave here, then an, an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here, but that doesn't give me five. Well, oh, it does, I suppose it does give us one and two and three and four and five, maybe. Um, uh, and that's okay. Um, oh, in fact, that needs to sit over here for that because that would be one and two and three abc for four and here and up for five so yeah that can be a b wave here so it does appear to be more corrective than impulsive this one here appears to be more impulsive to the downside so we can take this top here and put that here and that would give us this thing here so really any move above the 1860 would see further upside at that point so we don't need to look at that top there we could also bring the copy this line and bring it down here so a move above that there would would see um <clears throat> would see it to the upside this move here does look rather uh impulsive let me just double check yeah, it looks all right as five waves so the other point here is that we could also refine this here. I'm just, because the wave count's not clear, I'm just sort of honing in to see, <clears throat> you know, what's going to come out of these gates here because we're working, we're just, <clears throat> we're bringing it in further and further. So each time it's got its 61.8% and moving in. So any move below, below this level here, the... Uh, 8151 then it's likely to be bearish at that point but we were talking about taking this low out but we could see it at 1851 at that point and of course we always gravitate over to the closest largest number so the 1850 would be a nice setup to the short side but you'll need to to get that you know, shorting this one here is not always that simple. You need the first low below the level here, and we may end up getting a second low below the level here, um, but you'd need one of those to be breached at that point. So we can now move this one. Because when, when you're taking the, the bottom out here, what normally happens, the market will come down, give it a double bottom there, and may take that order and then bounce back at that point. So we need to refine these things. And that's the same with over here as well, taking that top out. It's not really the, the case. So we'd look for the classic trading levels pattern sitting over here as well. And this is also interesting because it's on the 65 here. So 65, 72 and 80, that's all of group two there. So we can, we're just refining this, that's all. So when the wave count is not clear, then you need to do things like this here and this is just my way of doing things but it's more important to find your own way and you can only have your own confidence in your own way once you've been sort of beaten around the bush and um, work things out and had that experience there but whatever uh, you can use you need to use so this does appear to be corrective up here and that does appear to be impulsive down through to here so it's possible that this can be taken out uh, here there's other ways to count that you could also put the b wave over here as well but as i mentioned before it's possible to put that b wave here for that and that would be um instead of having it here for that so look we're just in still in a rock and a hard place um so we you know it, it's not like we're in a corrective pattern within a corrective pattern so it's choppy as hell um we're not in a trend so you know just understand that you know um it's like the days in a week really so with five days in a week then if you're a day trader they're not all going to be fantastic days to trade are they um if you can get two of those days out of three of those days to trade uh to give you trends well that's that's pretty average um but most of the time the markets are in sort of correction so you know getting two days out of three days um to, to trade in, uh and to make money um 
that's sort of how it is. So you just got to kind of wait for those. But we're going to get a breakout from here soon and uh, we'll see. We'll just need to see if we get five waves up to this point and then drop from here. And as always, I've always said here that because this is the 61.8%, if we get support on this level with a classic trading levels pattern, um, that would be the arrival, the reaction in three waves, the first high above the level, then an ABC pattern here. Well, then we go long from that point and we'll be going up from that point. But otherwise, we should be looking to move further down. It's just that do we come down from here or do we come down from here is the question. And none of this in here is easy to track. It doesn't matter how good of Elliot you are, you know, it, um, it's just not, it's just not a clear case at this stage. Alrighty, uh, I've waffled on long enough and I haven't really given any answers. Um, I'm just going to say that it's, it's tough and we're not ready to trade this yet. Okay, cheers.